on the box in the corner, we can tell it's probably going to be a right angle worth 90 degrees. If we want to check for sure, one tool we can use to measure it with is a protractor. To measure with a protractor, there's a circle hole in the middle with a line extending out from either side of it. I'm going to line that circle up with my vertex and then line up that black line along my ray. When I do that, we can see that it points to 90 degrees on my other ray. So we know that this is a right angle worth 90 degrees. We can see from the way it's labeled that this is going to be an acute angle. So we know it's less than 90 degrees, but we don't know exactly what it's worth. This is where we can use our protractor to measure it. Again, I'm going to line up the circle at my vertex and use this black line to line up along my bottom ray. When we do that, we can see that our angle points to both 60 degrees and 120 degrees. Well, since we know it's an acute angle, we know it has to be less than 90, so 120 can't be a reasonable answer. So therefore, it must be 60 degrees. The other way we can tell is since I have two arcs of numbers, one on the inside and one on the outside, is by looking at our bottom ray. Our bottom ray pointing off to the right is where we're going to consider to be zero degrees. The outside arc counts zero, 0,170. Well, that's not reasonable. The inside arc, on the other hand, counts zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. So I know I would be following the inside values, making this still worth 60 degrees. From the way this angle is measured, we can tell it's an obtuse angle. So we know it's going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. We can line up our protractor, though, to be more exact. I'm going to line up the circle at the vertex and my bottom ray along there. Now, the first thing I notice is that my ray isn't long enough to reach the numbers. So, since rays can be extended forever in one direction, I can take my protractor, use it as a straight edge, line it up with the ray, and use it to extend longer so it'll cross my protractor. Now, when I line it up, I can see it crosses at both 35 and 145 degrees. Well, since it's an obtuse angle, we know 35 isn't going to be reasonable, so that means it must be 145. Our other way to tell is, again, look at our bottom ray. It's pointing off here to the left, which means I'm going to follow the top arc of numbers as they increase in value, bringing me around to 135 degrees. Looking at this angle, since it's labeled on the outside, we can tell it's a reflex angle. This means it's going to measure between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Unfortunately, when we line up our protractor, we notice we have a small problem and that our protractor only measures up to 180 degrees. In order to measure the reflex angle, we're going to have to instead start by measuring the inside acute angle. Line up your vertex, like always, and along your bottom ray. I can see this angle is either going to be 120 or 60 degrees. Since this is where it points to zero, we're following the outside arc, so this is a 60 degree angle. Now we know this inside angle is worth 60 degrees. Together, my inside angle and my outside angle make a complete circle worth 360 degrees. So to find the measure of my reflex angle, I can take 360 degrees minus the 60 degrees I know on the inside to leave me with 300 degrees for my reflex angle. If we want to draw an angle, one tool we can use is a protractor. In order to draw an angle with a protractor, I first need to create a ray. To do that, I can simply use the bottom edge of my protractor as a straight edge to draw a line. We know rays will go on forever in one direction, so that means I can use the other edge as my vertex. On my protractor, I have my circle here in the middle to line up my vertex, and then I can line up my ray along that black line. When I do, if I want to draw a 90 degree angle, I can simply come around to 90 degrees and make a mark where it's going to be. Again, I can use my protractor as a straight edge and connect my mark to my bottom ray. Now, we're going to label it with a box in a corner to show it's 90 degrees. We have our angle. We can use our protractor to draw an acute 50 degree angle as well. Again, I'm going to use my protractor as a straight edge to create my first ray. I'm going to then line up my vertex with the circle and my bottom ray along that black line. Now, I have two 50 degree measures on here. I have a 50 degrees here and I have a 50 degrees here. 
Well, we know 50 degrees is an acute angle measuring less than 90. So one way we can tell is this one comes before my 90 degrees, so that must be 50 degrees. My other choice is look at where my bottom ray is. This will be considered zero degrees, and then my angles need to increase from there. To do that, I would have to follow the inside arc, meaning again, I would be using this 50 degrees. So we're going to make a mark by that 50 degrees. Now we can pick up our protractor and use that mark to connect to our vertex to create the other ray of our angle. We're going to go ahead and label an arc on the inside to show which way we turned, and now we know that we have our 50 degree angle. I need to draw a 135 degree obtuse angle. So again, I'm going to start by using my protractor to create my bottom ray. Only instead of my ray pointing off to the right, I'm going to have it point off here to the left. That means I need to line up my vertex on this end. When I line it up on this end to get to 135 degrees, there's 135 degrees here between 120 and 130. There's also 135 degrees here between 130 and 140. To know which one to use, I know it needs to be obtuse, so I know it needs to be the one that goes beyond 90. I can also look to see which way my ray is pointing. Since this is considered zero degrees and I want my values to increase, I would be following the outside arc. When we follow the outside arc, again, we're using this 135 degrees. I can make my mark there and then use my protractor as a straight edge to connect that back to my vertex. I'm going to label to show the direction that I measured and we now have a 135 degree angle. We need to draw a 250 degree reflex angle. The problem is our protractor only measures up to 180 degrees. In order to do that, we need to remember the 250 degree reflex angle plus the angle on the inside combined to make a complete circle worth 360 degrees. So that's where we're going to start by taking our 360 degree circle and subtracting the 250 degree reflex angle we're trying to draw. This leaves us with 110 degrees, which we know is going to be the angle on the inside of our reflex angle. 110 degrees we can draw with our protractor. So we're going to start by using our protractor as a straight edge to make a ray, line up at the vertex. Since this is zero degrees, 110 degrees I'm going to be following in on the inside arc and 110 degrees make a mark and connect that to my vertex. Now we know this inside part is 110 degrees but we want the reflex part out here. So 110 degrees plus my 250 degree reflex angle together make my complete circle so I know the outside reflex is my 250 degrees. Check out the other videos in our playlist and don't forget to click on subscribe. Thanks for watching!